I think you get an idea of how excited we were about the work that we were prepared to bring our parents into the lab to finish off experiments um, on Christmas Day. In 2002, Cancer Research UK funded scientists at the Institute of Cancer Research, along with colleagues around the world, discovered that a gene called BRAF is faulty in many human cancers. But how did it all start? This was a very audacious idea that Mike Stratton and his colleagues Richard Wooster and Andy Futrell had. And towards the end of the last century, as the human genome project started to become available, so they set about a very bold experiment where they would start to sequence all of the human genes in a whole lot of different human cancer samples to try and identify those genes which were damaged. It was an incredible idea, really, to to have and it was really very brave and bold of them to think that you could actually do this and they went out and they did it and the first thing that they discovered was that in fact BRAF is mutated in a high proportion of cancers particularly in melanoma where about half of melanomas have mutations or genetic damage in the BRAF gene. We really hadn't expected the, the discovery um, as I say most people thought BRAF was a rather tedious protein from the point of view of cancer research and everything changed really um, from that point on at least as far as melanoma research was was concerned and that was the year when I came in on Christmas Day to finish off some experiments and bumped into my boss Chris Marshall who was in with his mother and he was finishing off some experiments so I think you get an idea of how excited we were about the work that we were prepared to bring our parents into the lab to finish off experiments um, on Christmas Day. Since the discovery that BRAF is faulty in many cancers, Professor Murray and his team have gone on to study it in great detail. Cancer is a very complicated disease. It needs a lot of different things to happen for a cell to go from being a normal, well-functioning cell to becoming a cancer. And BRAF can be the first event in that procession of events that goes from a normal pigment cell in your skin to developing a cancer cell. I think one of the major things that we, we achieved some years ago was to understand the crystal structure of, of the BRAF protein. Now, what that actually means is that in three dimensions we can look at the shape of the protein. We can see where the active site of the enzyme is, and we can see all the nooks and crannies that we could then design drugs which would then fit into those nooks and crannies, filling up the active site, and thereby blocking the activity of the mutated protein. Not only does that give us great insight into how the protein actually works, but it will also allow us to distinguish differences from the mutated protein and the normal protein that functions in normal cells. And so we can then try and make the drugs fit just into the mutated protein, thereby leaving the normal cells alone. And that will, of course, hopefully, give us great specificity of these drugs, giving therapeutic effects without the, the terrible side effects that are generally associated with cancer therapies. At the Institute of Cancer Research, Cancer Research UK funded scientist Professor Caroline Springer and her team are developing new drugs to target BRAF, testing thousands of chemicals to find ones that lock on to the faulty protein. We've selected one to go forward to clinical trial with a number of backups, but we're very hopeful that those clinical trials will be performed soon in the Ron Marsden Hospital, which is next door. Ultimately, how does it feel to be involved in a team that's, that's really pushing forward with exciting new treatments for cancer? I think it's enormously exciting. I mean, obviously, it's our goal to work in, at the forefront of cancer therapies, and that's what we've been able to do with this discovery. So it's tremendously exciting for us and our teams. So in terms of melanoma, we have much greater understanding of the disease. We have much better understanding of the sorts of strategies one might employ to treat the disease. But also there have been other discoveries as a consequence of this work in other cancers. And so you can see how not only melanoma has been affected by this research, but other cancers are now, and there are many other examples that I could give you.